Hello everyone, I'm the Solar Gamer, and welcome to Kerbal Space Program. Today I'm just gonna put out a little video, and it's not much, but it's cool, I think. Um, I have a bunch of videos in store for Kerbal Space Program. One involves building a community space station, which should be interesting. The other is uh, me starting up my own space company. Yeah, so to speak. And uh, I know there isn't a career mode yet, but we're gonna be creating our own, basically. But for now, I'm just gonna upload this little video here just to show you guys that I'm not done with KSP in any way. All right, so let's get going. Now I have discovered a bug and I have exploited that bug to give you guys some content. <laughs> All right, so first off, let's get rid of this stage for one second. Get out of here. And I will show you what we have here. This is a UFO. Yes, entirely. It's, uh, it's a saucer-shaped UFO. It's got a little ion engine on there, some lights, and three xenon gas tanks, one battery bank. In fact, let's see. Yeah, we've got one, two, three xenon tanks in there. A battery bank, as I said. And it's all an unmanned probe. Now I will show you guys how to make this because it's not gonna be here for very much longer <laughs> considering I'm making a video on it. All right, so if we go into structural, you'll see this little saucer-shaped adapter. We'll snap that on there just like that. And as you can see, we can kind of place this together. Uh, it won't let us right now, but if we stick it on here first and then drag it in, it, uh, it kind of glitches out the system and you can create a little saucer-shaped craft. Not only can you do that, but you can add in things like a battery bank. Just shove that in there, it's stuck in there. See? It's not there anymore because it's inside. You can also do, I guess we'll recreate it. We'll do the xenon tanks, stick it on, drop it in. Stick it on, drop it in. Again, you could do this with anything. I don't think there is a limit to how many things you can stick on in there. And as you could check here, in the debug toolbar, I do not have part clipping enabled. So it is in fact a bug that I am not in control of. What else can we stick in there? Something small. Oh god, these are not small. Let's stick some RCS in there. Good. Beautiful. It's in there. <laughs> and you can essentially just keep doing this for however long you want. Stick an engine right in the middle of the thing. And that is the bug. So I took the liberty of creating something useful out of it. I've created a little UFO. Based on reports dating back to the 1960s. You know, saucer-shaped... We got some lights on there. <laughs> it's not an efficient craft, but it does look awesome when we get into space. So, let's do that. And considering you could place as many xenon tanks in here as possible, as many fuel tanks in there, whatever you want, you can actually create an interstellar craft without, you know, the worry of fuel. But like I said before, this bug will not stay in effect, obviously. So, I mean, I'm showing you this, but don't expect that you'll be able to do it for much longer. All right, let's take off. It's a very beautiful craft. <laughs> so I'm not going to go into details with the community space station. Just note that it's going to be awesome. We are going to get other YouTubers and, you know, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be one big mega structure up in space. That's the plan anyways. But like I said, we're still in the process of planning it out, and I can't guarantee anything yet, so just stay tuned for more on that. Now because this craft is upside down, that was the only way of getting this decoupler on there, the orientation is in reverse. So it looks like we're in, our <laughs> in the opposite direction, we're heading down, but that's just because our command pod is upside down. Once this is detached, everything will go back to normal. So we kind of have to do things in reverse, like I said. So we have to head to 270 instead of 90 to get that perfect 90 degree orbit. And we can start heading over there now. That's fine. All right, we'll drop those. Up, 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 up. Yeah, it seems to do that. I don't know why. Come on. There we are. Calm down there, buddy. <laughs> Alright, let's wait till we get to our app 
Apoapsis, and uh, then we'll burn at 270 to get a good orbit. All right. Speed it up. Where are we? 750,000. God. Yeah, I did not need that much fuel, but hey, why not? That's that's all right. We'll leave it like that. And goodbye. The music is perfect. <laughs> All right, stop your spinning. Stop, stop it, stop it. We need to face you in the direction of the sun. So that these solar panels can get to work. Oh, 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 oh. There we go. Lock it into place. Okay, now let's turn on the lights. Look at that. Doesn't that look awesome? They don't provide any effect other than light on the shadow of the, the craft. It just looks amazing. As well as the ion engine there. That gives a little bit of light. So like I said, this thing can travel to planets. I am not going to take it to a planet because this would take... Oh god, I would be sitting at my desk for about two to three hours just getting it to... <laughs> because this ion engine is so, so low in thrust. The funny thing is that this isn't even realistic to what it would be in real life. The thrust is actually greater in this ion engine than what we could accomplish in real life. So, I mean, it would take forever. I don't know, I quite like this though. I really do. It's simple. It's exploiting a bug. <laughs> Whoa. Alright guys, well I hope you enjoyed this little episode. It wasn't much, but like I said, there is more on the way. So, I hope you all enjoyed, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more.